Hey everyone, I just wanted to walk you through the final bit of this loser assignment in case you were in a different breakout room where you missed class uh, and you can use this as a reference. So there will be chapter markers because this will be a little bit long, <coughs> but I will go through the assignment, the assignment requirements and then uh, how to use some of the resources and what an example of this looks like. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get myself out of the way. Uh, in our modules, the place you want to make sure you uh, find is the loser resources page. So everything is on here. This video, including, will be on here when I am done. You can see that the uh, the identification and interpretation collaborations we did last week are in here, as are those original assignments if you haven't finished those. And now the structural analysis of loser, that's our final piece to this puzzle. And that's the assignment we're going to be taking a look at. There is also an evidence chart which I will use during the demonstration that is available for you as well. Okay, and then also down here, you can see here is the example that I will show you. You can uh, pull that document up at any time for your own reference. So those are the big, those are the big resources along with this video that will be in there. Uh, so let's jump right into the new assignment, which is the structural, structural analysis of Loser. So you'll be completing it in a document and then uploading that document. We'll take a look at it in just a moment. What I did want to point out in here is that there are two big criteria on which you're being graded. One of them is your logical organization. So how you organize your ideas and your, and your argument, your evidence. Um, this will be both in the pre-writing and in the writing itself. And then using evidence. So making sure you have a direct quote from the story. So those are the two big things. There is a grammar, syntax, and punctuation on the rubric, but it does not count towards your final score. Um, and it's just there for reference for us to get a little more data, but there are no points attached to that. There are only points attached to using evidence and coherence and logic. So that's how you're getting graded. Let's take a look at what this document looks like. So you can see there, there's, there are actually two responses. Let me go back real fast. There are, there's one required analysis prompt and then one optional explore prompt. If you are missing some work and you would rather do this instead of the makeup assignment, then um, on this, on your document at the very bottom, score to the bottom first, this optional exploration, you can complete this to replace up to eight points from uh, either one assignment or a couple of assignments. Uh, but that is the optional part. The part that is mandatory is this analysis prompt. So you have a choice of three prompts. You are going to be choosing one and responding in a long paragraph to one of these. In all three of these, you are picking the structure. You're writing about structure and how it affects part of the story of Loser. So you can see in prompt A, it tells you um, what you're going to be writing about, analyze the effect of the narrative structure on the theme in Loser that people are more important than property. So not only do, um, are you narrowed down to theme, but to one specific theme in particular. People are more important to property. For option B, it's focused on character. How is the young man's trait of loneliness enhanced by the structure of Loser? So we're still dealing with structure, but now it's all about his character development of loneliness. And if you would like to do something different than those two, um, you have option C, which allows you to choose. Analyze the effect of narrative structure on the theme, tone, or character development of loser. So you have your choice of which area and also how that area manifests. So those are the three prompts. You're going to choose one of them. In all of them, you're, choose, you're still choosing the structure and then just how that structure is applied in the story. And that's what's common between them. Um, so let's go down to, there, there's two parts, the planning and then the writing. In the planning, there's a graphic organizer with four main parts. Rewording, identification, interpretation, and evidence. You, uh, you will fill out this graphic organizer that is part of it. So um, the first thing you do is like you'll just copy and paste your prompt in here. And then ask, answer these two questions about the prompt itself. What does the prompt give me? And what do I need to answer or add from the prompt? So um, this will be the same for each one regardless. What does the prompt give you? You're going to be writing about the short story loser, right? You're going to be writing about structure. Uh, and then depending on which prompt you, you chose, uh, it, it may be given some else, 
right? So what do you need to add to it? Well, you're going to have to pick which structure, right? You're going to have to describe how it has an effect. And you might even need to pick something else. If you have prompt C, then there's going to be one other thing that you need to make a choice about in that. And that's, that's just to kind of give you a, a way to organize what your full and complete answer looks like. Then once you did that, you are going to, um, in here, pick one of our structures that we, that we uh, discussed over the last few days and, uh, and focus just on one type. And how does that structure affect the story? How does it affect the theme if you're doing theme or the character if you're doing character? How is it doing its job? And then in the evidence, you're going to copy and paste uh, lines from the story. You can do, I suggest you do multiples because that way you have uh, multiples to choose from and you fit the best one in there for your particular style and answer. Once you've got everything in this table, like you're pretty much good to go. All you got to do then is turn, it, turn them into sentences, make sure they sound nice. And uh, there are a few tips in the analysis response here. You can see these bullet points to remind you what to include. You want to, start, you want to rewrite the prompt as an affirmative statement with your choices. Okay. So um, we'll take a look at what that means in the example and, and uh, my little suggestions for you on that. Do not forget to cite evidence from the text. You must, must, must cite evidence from the text directly. Uh, then you will explain how that evidence proves your point. And you can do those two in either order. Or you can give the explanation first and then the evidence, or you can do the quote first and then explain it, whatever works for you. And then you're gonna end with either a summary or an extension of your thought process. So you can wrap up what you just said, or you can take the reader on to that next kind of like logical piece of the puzzle, whichever can't way kind of works for you. Uh, if you remember, this is not the part that's being graded the heaviest. I am looking for your logical thought process and I'm looking for your evidence to be included. And then there's a place for your response. So that is your basic sort of prompt, pre-writing and writing choices that you'll be making. And let's move on to um, what this actually looks like in practice and how we can use some of the resources to help us out. So obviously you can use your documents that you have already. Uh, I'm going to go back to this page here, to our losers resor loser resources page. You can use these collaboration pages. You also have copies of your, the documents you turned in, and those leading questions will help you out. And then the new part is this evidence chart. What I have done is I have collected all the things that we talked about and put them into one table. Okay, so spread out over a couple days. One table here, you can see it's not filled out all the way uh, to give you guys a little bit of freedom of choice and also to you know stretch those brain muscles a little bit. But the, the first column here, the structure identification, these are all the different types of structures that we looked at in this short story. And you are picking one of these, right? You, you are gonna focus on one. So is it the physical structure of the short paragraphs? Is it the conflict? Is it the problem or one of the problems in the story? And it could be, um, as you can see here, internal, like something that the young man has a problem with, or it could be one of the external problems. There's a couple of those. Same thing with the plot, right? So the conflict is the structure of the problem. The plot is how the events unfold. Uh, are those related? You bet you, they definitely are. But the plot is, is much more concerned with the actual events, whereas the conflict is more about the setup, if that helps you. you could, we also we talked a little bit about the dialogue formatting and the strangeness and how it followed the rules sometimes and broke the rules other times. We looked at a handful of flashbacks and we saw a little bit of repetition, mostly in the beginning and the end of the story. Uh, so you can use any of those. And uh, this chart is not a requirement. This is not a, a piece that you must finish, but this is um, this is a resource for you to help you guide you towards the prompt you want to use and perhaps the, the collection of evidence that you put in there. Um, so we'll be using this in class and you can finish this together with peers, but yeah, but you don't have to. Um, <clears throat> so that's how you can use this chart. I used this top row in my example. So if you want to follow along with my with an example, um, that's what we're going to do next. And so I used, I talked about short paragraphs. I talked about disconnection and I found all of the paragraphs in the story that were like one sentence paragraphs. And there's like a, that's just like a little shorthand there, but that gives me like a nice place to go and move on to my response. 
So let's take a look at what this looks like when it gets filled out. So I, I chose a very specific prompt for myself that's a little bit different than y'all's. So um, you cannot replicate this, obviously. Um, you can make any other kind of combination of choices that you want, but you cannot do this. Um, so my question was, how does the structure of loser help develop the tone of disconnectedness? So this would be like a prompt A or a prompt B, right? Giving, giving, giving me a lot of information and leaving me with only like the smallest choices. Uh, the prompt C gives you more choices. So in the rewording, what does the prompt give me? Well, it tells me I'm using structure, right? It tells me I'm using the short story loser. It tells me I'm, I'm focusing on tone and what kind of tone I'm focusing on, and that's disconnectedness. So it, the prompt actually gives me a lot. Um, what do I need to add? Well, I have to figure out A, what type of structure it is, and B, what that structure does. How does that structure actually help develop this disconnectedness? So those are the two things that I have to make decisions about. And thankfully, those are actually the next two boxes in our pre-writing. So that works out perfectly. So the structure I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use single sentence paragraphs if we come back to our evidence chart, right? The short paragraphs. Um, and how does it do it? And so like, here's kind of like the hardest part is, um, so what I said was that the paragraphs show a physical separation on the page to represent the young man's separation. Right? Kind of mirrored those two things. And then I found, I took my evidence chart right here and I looked up all these paragraphs in the story and I found three to copy and paste in here. And you can see I have the direct quote and I have the paragraph number. So I have it, you know, at a glance, I can quickly use whichever ones fit me the best. And that's it, man. I got it, right? I have, I have answered the prompt. I've got, I have a structure. I have what that structure does. Right? It's a physical separation to represent the young man's like emotional separation. Perfect. All I have to do now is turn that into a prompt. So let's take a look at that next. <clears throat> so I have, I have color coded my prompt into the colors of these boxes to help you out. If you want to like reference back to that, you can, uh, you can just scroll through that. You can download this PDF. Uh, <clears throat> but the one thing I really want to talk about is this first bullet point, which is rewriting the prompt with your choices embedded in it. So my prompt, how does the structure of loser help develop the tone of disconnectedness? And I've underlined those things that I have to change. Remember, these were the two things that weren't given to me, what the structure is and how it works. Now, if your first sentence was simply a rewriting of it without putting those changes in, that's still acceptable. But I, I, highly I highly, highly recommend that you get into this practice because it just, A, it ups your style game. B, it keeps you focused on what, you're, on, on what the question is. And C, it lets the reader know that, uh, they, that you're on top of your game and you know what you're doing. So like if I had just said, the structure of loser helps develop the tone of disconnectedness. That's fine as long as I get really specific later on. But if you change them in that first sentence, then that helps you stay specific and stay focused. So not the structure, but the single sentence paragraphs. The single sentence paragraphs in the short story develop the tone of disconnectedness by creating the physical separation that represents the main character's emotional separation, right? So I changed my structure and I changed my how to those things. And that kind of, uh, that gets the reader ready for what I'm gonna do. And then I've got two different quotes in here. You are required to have one. You can put two if you want, but you're only required to have one. But I wanted to show you how you could put the quote first, right? In the third paragraph, um, Jenny herself looked at him especially on online, and then I explained it. Or you could do it, you could flip it around. And you could see in my second version, I have the explanation first, and then I have the quote. So uh, both of those are okay. It really just depends on your style of writing and how clear you are getting your point across. So either way, either order that you do that in, it's really about just making the clearest statement that the reader can follow. And then this was my summary. So that's what you're looking at. You're looking at maybe like five to seven or eight sentences. And this one is even a little bit longer because it has two pieces of evidence instead of one. Um, if it takes two to, to drive your point home, then absolutely add them. Because remember, it's all about like, am I being logical? Am I being clear? And am I, and am I backing it up with evidence? 
You have to back it up with evidence. Do not assume that um, we're all on the same page as you, right? Pretend like you're trying to convince somebody. So that is, that's what the example looks like, right? And that's how you use the chart to maybe kind of get you ready, um, you know, put the pieces together for your pre-writing. Once again, these are on the loser resources page in the module. So the evidence chart is up in here. Um, this new assignment is right here, structural analysis of loser. And then the example that I have completely filled out is down here under final response. Um, we're gonna be working on this for Tuesday and Thursday in class. So I will see you then. If you have any questions, please reach out and let me know.